Hi, I'm Hannah, founder of Love to Dream. In this lesson, we look at how to interpret crying. Crying is one of the few ways your baby can communicate with you. So it's time to learn a new language. Edwina, a super midwife and member of our dream team, is here to help you start. Crying. This is your baby talking to you. They're expressing themselves the best way they can and it can mean so much. Your baby might be cold, wet, hungry, overtired or overstimulated. They might cry when you change something in their routine, like supporting them to self-settle after perhaps always holding, rocking or feeding them to sleep. At first, you might think their cries always sound the same, but soon enough, you can pick up on the nuances of their crying and you'll see there's a different cry for different reasons, really. And when you hear their cry, it's normal that your first instinct is to run over and pick them up. But when you're trying to help your baby learn to self-soothe and fall asleep independently, identifying the different types of crying will let you know what's happening. So there's a bit of a checklist to run through when your baby cries to help you work out if it's something that they need or if they're just trying to settle themselves to sleep or back to sleep. These are, are they due for a feed? Do they need a nappy change? Are they coming into the light part of their sleep cycle and need more sleep? Are they overtired? Are they unwell? So let's look at this checklist in more detail. How do you know what your baby is saying? When to intervene and when not to intervene? Well, your sleep feed uptime routine will help you a lot. Where you are in the cycle will give you lots of clues. For example, if your newborn baby is nice and full from their feed, they've been burped, nappy changed, and it's been about an hour since they woke up, if they now start crying, Chances are they're tired and it's time to sleep. Another example, if your baby has just woken up from a long nap and they're crying, they're telling you they're hungry. Of course, it's not always that easy, but you'll soon see patterns and learn your baby's different cries to know how to help them. Listening to your baby crying can be really difficult, even if it's just a self-settling cry. Sometimes it's hard not to scoop up your baby right away, right? Every minute can feel like forever. So don't be too hard on yourself when you're trying to work through understanding your baby's cries. Here are some little tips to help you work out what is what. Generally, if your baby's crying is up and down in volume and pitch, ranging from a full level cry to a nah, winding down type of cry. This may be a time when it's okay for you to see if your baby can settle without your assistance. When you've put baby down to self-settle to sleep, this type of crying is a positive sign they are going through the self-settling process. So try to hold off rushing into your baby when they are crying like this and see which way the fuss goes. They may do this for a while and then just stop and fall asleep. If you go into them straight away or after just two or three minutes, your baby won't have enough time to go through the self-settling process. It might be a little hard at first, but give your bub a little space and time to work through their self-settling and remind yourself why you're not rushing into them. It's important to note here, we are definitely not promoting controlled crying or any kind of cry it out method. We're not suggesting you leave your baby to cry completely on their own, unassisted. You are always there, nearby, ready to comfort your baby when they need you. If their crying is a full on, sustained, fever pitch, gurgling type cry that isn't decreasing in intensity, you need to intervene. Here's what it can sound like. A cry like this, where there is no let up at all for a sustained period, is unlikely to wind down and your baby needs your support. 
to help bring them back down to a calmer level during their going to sleep or back to sleep process. And in the next episode, we'll show you some settling methods for this. Of course, in the early days, it's tricky to work out the type of cry you're hearing. You're still getting to know your baby and the sounds and behavioral patterns. Remember, go through the checklist. We've also got this to download as a guide. With time and practice, you'll get there. And if you're struggling to work it all out, take a break, make yourself a cup of tea, head out to the veranda for some fresh air and deep breaths. A few minutes can help you reset. If there's ever a sleep session that feels particularly tough for you and your baby, pick them up and rock them back to sleep. This is okay. Sometimes it's what you need, it's what your baby needs. Every day is different and that's okay. Give yourself a break and don't worry about it all. If you're ever feeling worried or concerned about your baby's prolonged crying, especially if there are other symptoms at the same time, always seek medical advice from your GP or paediatrician. Looking after an unsettled baby can take a toll on you and your partner. Some babies are easier than others to settle for no reason at all. It's no reflection on you. So please be kind to yourself. If you feel like you're not coping, if it's impacting your well-being or your relationships, or if you just need some support, please speak with your GP, healthcare nurse, or, or one of the support services in your area, but reach out. We've listed a number of these on our helpful links and support page. Remember to look for the lesson summary below this video. You'll find extra information, links, and you can download printable guides to refer back to when you need them. Thank you.